Let's explain some fucking things to people. We need to do this. We need to. We have to do it. Hello? Hello, Ghostbusters. <laughs> Hello, Ghostbusters. Uh, this is Ray Parker's senior's uh, mum. I'm just wondering if you've seen Ray Parker Jr. anywhere. Um, yeah, he's just gone down the shop to get some mixed lollies. Oh, good, good, good. Um, someone, please send him back home when you can. Um, he's he's been um, he, he hasn't answered any of my calls. Uh, yeah, and he's been a naughty boy. He uh, he ate the cat. Oh God, he's always doing that. He's got fur balls. He's been hospitalised so many times. Um, you know, he goes out and he says, "Well, who are you going to call?" And I said, "Can you shot, stop saying that? You know who you're going to call. You go to a pay phone. You call your mama. I'll come pick up my little my little uh, Volkswagen." Yeah. And, uh, you know, he needs to be hospitalised because he's he's mental. Yeah. I mean, he, he keeps saying that he's possessed and so on, and he's going to uh, something about the I don't know the devil's going to kind of um, he's, like he's had sex with the devil or something. Does he say that kind of thing to you? He's always telling. Yeah, him. yeah. He said um, that he really he hates Huey Lewis and the News. Well, um, right. Jerry's least favourite band. Well, that's because they did the um, the soundtrack to the second Ghostbusters film. Um, as as you know, the the song that they did, um, the what was it again? The uh, Hurdy Gurdy Man. Yeah. Uh, which was obviously you know upset Ray a lot, and he went. That's when he went into his depression. And so anyway, if you see him uh, when he's come back from getting the mix release, just tell him to call yeah. Mama, and I'm I'm going to come down and and pick him up. Okay. Yeah, he went, he went to get some mixed lollies with Bobby Brown. Oh, that's good. Well, yes, Bobby's always been very good to Ray. Um, anyway, yeah, he's so, pushing him around in a wheelchair. Excellent. And if you could just say hi to Rick Moranis and thank him for signing um, that uh, Little Shop of Horrors VHS cassette. Yeah. All right. And if um, anyone heard that that's um, age 20, they don't know what we're talking about at all. No, they wouldn't. Well, that's what that's our no. job, though, is to explain that to people. And welcome to Video Explain. Hello. Welcome back, episode six. Hi, I'm Morgan Freeman. What's your name? I'm Dan Cross. Oh wow, you're just you're 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 not hiding behind nothing, are you? You're not afraid for people to know. I'm you. not. No. Who you are and what you do. For a living, this is what we do to make money. I mean, we're not ashamed of this. Um, yeah. Some people have to go and ditch, dig, dig ditches. I can't even say it. Yeah. Um, my articulation, that's what I'm paid for, to articulate thoughts that other people can't express. Yeah. Um, I don't even know how to make a fire properly. No. Let well, alone that's right. dig a ditch. No, well, someone does that for you. You know, when you get cold, you just... Uh, your maid will set one up for you, make sure your slippers are on and all that. You've got your PJs all pressed and, you know. Yeah. Um, then when it's time to turn in, of course, you, you'll find that your you electric blanket's already on and you get carried into the bed. Yeah. Um, you know, they turn down the bed for you, make sure all that's done because um, you're very much a hygiene freak as well. Um, you have to have a new mattress every week. You know the shit. Yeah, I've got be... bottles of piss in here too. Oh yes, of course. We're doing the um, what was his name again? The uh, I was going to say Hugh Hefner, but it wasn't him. I think it was Peter, uh, Peter the... Laurie. Martin Scorsese did a film about. Um... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what was his name? Um, Allen Ginsberg. The Aviator. Yeah, that's right. Um, How uh, many uh, the milk? Peter Andre. Yeah, Peter it? Andre. Oh, sorry, Harvey Milk. That's right. Yes. Yeah. 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 So today's episode, mm. um, I chose a meatloaf song. You did. You chose his best one. Ah, uh, well, it's, it's, we said not to go for an obvious one, so I found this one it's from 1994, mm. and it's based on a car sticker. Um, is that where the idea of the song came from, or the titles "Objects in the Rearview Mirror" may appear closer than they are? Mm. 
Uh, yeah, and it's been a long time since I've because actually seen it. it on, you'd see it on a car mirror. Yeah. Well, that was my question, though, is how, how long has it been since you have seen one of those stickers? Because um, I'm guessing 1994 was the last time they appeared on a, on a real yeah. mirror. Um, I have a feeling that uh, car manufacturers, after this song came out, couldn't bring themselves to, to do it anymore. They sort of felt a bit embarrassed about it. Yeah. Um, and I guess most people have kind of figured out the fact that, yes, you can get visual distortions from a rear vision mirror. I mean, generally, you should look at the person coming towards you rather than using a rear vision mirror from a car. Mm. Um, well, I, I should have known that it was a new, uh, an old video, because, like, Midlife's looking okay in it. Oh, it looks thought, really good. Originally, I thought, like, oh, it must be a new one, and they've just done a bunch of um, mm. CGI on him. Yeah, well, they'd have to now because, I mean, he's, uh, I think he's 71. I could be wrong. Um, yeah, right. He collapsed on stage a couple of years back. Um, I've been watching this TV show, Autopsy, um, about famous people's uh, deaths and so on. So I'm, I've been, I'm pretty sure he's going to have a very interesting episode. Um, just waiting for him to appear on it, but obviously he's still alive. Yeah. So we won't be able to... Uh, he won't be on the show until he's uh, snuffed it, and then we'll get the celebrity um, uh, pathologist to go through his autopsy report and find out what actually really did kill him. Was it excessive mm. screaming? Was it um, the obviously his weight? Was it uh, diabetes? You know what is it? Um, because he's, he's probably going to live longer than me. You know, I, I just sometimes I see people that. I I wonder if their health is any good, and I think I bet you they'll outlive me, you know. And, and meatloaf, seventy one's not a bad innings at all, you know. Yeah. Um, I reckon you know he could be around for a while. The main Guess problem, though, the main problem though, is his voice is completely shot. Yeah. Well, when he sang at the AFL. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everyone was like, he got paid half a million dollars, and oh, nearly wasn't yeah. going to go out because it was raining. And uh, he couldn't hear himself. No, he couldn't. And he's the lucky one, you know. Um, it's one of the most hilarious <laughs> things. And that, you know, my favourite team, Geelong, they won the grand final that year, last time they did. And uh, Meatloaf was the uh, entertainment in the halftime entertainment. And my favourite moment in the whole, well, was a couple of good bits. One was when he got these um, uh, giant hot dogs, or they were kind of look like hot dogs, that shot out T-shirts. Um, oh, right. Meatloaf t-shirts? Or? I don't know. It's just, at a certain point, him and someone else just randomly grabbed these uh, these miss missile launchers that were shaped like hot dogs that shot out a t-shirt each at somebody, some lucky person that got a t-shirt. Um, yeah. My other favourite bit, apart from the motorcycle entourage at the start, was um, he's singing, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that, um, to a woman... And the amazing thing about the woman, uh, this kind of a juxtaposition, is that she can sing in tune. Um, yeah, right. Even though, oh, I see. Yeah. So I can't, I won't do that singing in tune. No, well, that's right. I mean, he'd that's, do anything for yeah. love. Uh, I mean, he's sweating but, profusely. He Obviously, like you say, he can't hear himself. That's not his fault, is it? You know? He'll do anything for love, but he won't wear a double strap on. No, he wouldn't do that. Um, he would get half a million dollars, but no one's going to give him a little bit of fallback. You know, and he's, yeah. he's not going to use his half mil to get a pair of fucking headphones or anything like that. You know what I mean? That's not yeah. his problem. Um, and he's he's not getting paid to please people, is he? Really? Yeah. Uh, I don't think he's just. It's just a contract. If he turns up, then that's a bonus. It's just basically and just the idea of it is always getting paid. He probably for. probably just bought a chicken farm with the money and fucked all the chickens uh, and yeah. then ate them. Um, I, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know what you call that. It is a necrophile or whatever it is. Why? No, no, file. that's not, no, sorry, hang on, you said fuck them, then eat them? Hang on. Yeah. Hang on, he eats them while they're alive? Hang on, what did you say? I'm half asleep, mate, sorry. He fucks them, then eats the chickens. Yeah, right, while they're alive. Uh, I uh, probably um, shouldn't have said that at all. No, no, it was pretty horrible what you just said, but, um, you know, we're rolling with it. So, meatloaf. Owns a chicken farm, and one by one, he rapes each chicken, um, obviously probably, you know, giving them internal injuries, and then... No, he makes love to them. 
Oh, he makes love to them. All right, he lubes them up and gently... <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. He gently uh, pushes his way inside a chicken that's still very much alive. Um, then It takes takes about seven minutes because that's the length of the meatloaf song. Yes, that's right. He times it to the song that we're supposed to be um, discussing. Yeah. Which is a very I, ugly uh, segue back to it. Yeah, I um, actually, because I, I watched it three times and it kept going over my head, so I wrote some notes down and I worked mm. out what the song was about. Yeah, cool. You know, later on. Do you want me to read from that? Oh, fuck yeah. So, there's two teenagers hanging out. Right. And one's a young meatloaf. Yep. And the other one's Meatloaf's brother. Mm-hmm. And um, Meatloaf's brother steals his dad's aeroplane. Mm. And then about three seconds later, it blows up and he kills him. Yeah. Um, um, and then uh, Meatloaf sings, is, if life is just a highway, yep. then the soul is just a car. Yeah, that's nice. A nice metaphor. Yeah. And then, so... And during all this, this old, older meatloaf just stalking outside people's houses like um, mm. the Grim Reaper. But there's a funeral, mm. and a young meatloaf sees a ghost of, an, of the airplane flying over, so he's mm. hallucinating. Yep. And, and then the lyric that comes up is, My father's eyes were blank as he hit me again and again and again. Yeah. So he's pretty dark. Yeah, it's meeting up, uh, beating up meatloaf. Well, that's, that's that's real life. Yeah, he had a friend called Kenny, uh, and and that's where the thing came from for stuff about who killed Kenny because um, yeah, meatloaf did. So meat, meatloaf's father turns out to become an alcoholic after the plane exploding, mm-hmm. and um, and then it's just old meatloaf lurking in the house. Yeah, and then um, the last bit I wrote down was that young meatloaf makes out with a woman in a car. Yeah, um, and he sings. Um, she used she used my her body just like a bandage. Yeah, yeah. No, it's because he's wounded soul because he's still in love with Kenny. Um, yeah, and traumatized by his death, and and even though this hot woman that uh, enjoys nothing more than wearing skimpy clothing and, and doing car washing, uh, wants to just grind against him. He, he's really just a damaged person, you know. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's the... Se- no, the third part, yeah, so that's when he has sex. Um, so there's kind of this enjoyment of a comparison of a woman and a car. Um, yeah. Because they're both very similar. And he's, obsessed, he's obsessed with having sex in cars. Yeah. Over his career. Yeah. Um, well, that's what it was all about back then. I mean, that's, that's the way Meatloaf lived his life. I mean, uh, even when he was married, you know, uh, he had to have a car bed that was basically looked like a Chevy. Yeah. Um, that basically someone just, uh, I think they had to take the roof off and then drop the car in. I don't know how they did it or just rebuilt it. So it's a repurposed car. So basically... You know, to have his kids, he's got quite a few kids, and all of them were conceived in the back of a car, which was actually in his bedroom. Um, yeah, right. Um, and, of course, all his children are named Kenny, um, which is part of the tribute to the song, because it is autobiographical. I mean, um, Stein, what's his name? The guy who wrote it? Uh, Stein. Oh, yeah, so Meatloaf's... Uh, Boyfriend. Co-writer, co-writer for the listeners. Yeah. To our show, his name's Jim Steinman. Yeah, Jim, Jim, Jimmy Stein. Um, yeah, I mean, he was he was pretty much the wings beneath his wind. Uh, yeah, you know, very similar song. to uh, you know how Elton John used to write songs um, with David Lee Roth. I mean, sorry, with what's his name? There's another Jimmy Tony Taubman. Yeah, another yeah Taubman. Um, yeah. Trust me, his paints that kind of thing. So yeah, there's a, there's a connection somewhere loosely, but you know, it's a song. It's basically. I'll, I'll sing the songs, you write them, all right? Yeah. And uh, that's the way Meaty worked, you know. And actually... I've and it's actually two. from the album Bad Out of Hell 2, Back Into Hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a sequel. It is. Um, yeah, because he was treading water after Bad Out of Hell, and the record company said, look, this is a really good album, this Bad Out of Hell. What say if you just do another one? 
and mm. just call it Bat Out of Hell 2. And they said, well, yeah, I didn't think of that. I was thinking I'd just write something completely new. And they go, no, don't, don't do that. This is, this is a, that's suicide, you know. Yeah. Um, why do that when you can just kind of just keep retreading the same stuff? But they took it as a real challenge. I mean, um, Jim Steinberg and, and Meathead, they both sat down uh, by the piano and said, well, look, let's just lay out something really elaborate. Um, and, of course, the song that we're discussing, um, uh, My Head Looks Bigger in a Rearview Mirror, um, is an autobiographical song about his childhood, including, of course, being beaten uh, sadistically by his dad with a baseball bat. Um, uh, as, you, as you described, his, his best friend, Kenny, stole his dad's aeroplane because his dad used to be um, a pilot. Yeah, oh, you're on the Wikipedia page now. No, no, I'm just, I read it earlier today. I'm just memorizing. Oh, okay. It. Yeah. Um, yeah, so his dad was a pilot. Um, he used to work for the Red Cross. And um, one time when him and Kenny were um, uh, drunk, Kenny stole the aeroplane. Um, and, of course, you know, the being drunk gave him this confidence, false confidence that he could fly. And uh, Meathead just sort of was laughing and watching as Kenny taxied out of the barn um, at his dad's farm. And, yeah, um, yeah two seconds is, later... I liked it. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. But I'm so, I, I said it a lot more concisely, too. You're just saying what I said. But that what you said was what happened in the video clip. I'm telling you the real story. They're totally different. <laughs> it's totally different. You were just describing it, the video it, clip. Is it a true story? Yeah, it's a true story. But, um... Watching the actual video clip, which, by the way, was directed by Michael Bay, who yeah. um, basically directed one of, well, certainly one of the best war films of the last 50 years, which is Pearl Harbor. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of that in this. You know, you can kind of see the similarities of um, what he did with that, that amazing movie and probably a little bit of the Transformers as well, I guess, with the scene with the, uh, the girl, you know, leaning over the car and very skimpy clothing and all that sort of stuff. It was, you know, I mean, he loves women, Michael Bay, and he's very much uh, uh, a, fem yeah, the, a feminist, obviously. The, the woman seems like she's about 15 years older than the teenager in the car. Yes, but quite a bit younger than Meathead. So, yeah. in the, you know, because he's, he's got to find a balance there. But, yeah, that's true. I mean, he basically had sex with someone's mum. Um, yeah. But he, you know, his mind was was fucked because of what happened to Kenny. Um, yeah. And in in the video clip too, what, I mean, after because I noticed that there was a continuation of the explosion. So he blew up, and then they kept showing this explosion, and then it cut to the funeral. And I thought it would have been cool if his coffin exploded, you know, as, yeah, right. <laughs> you or know. if the meatloaf exploded. Well, yeah, just keep it going. Just everything just continuously explodes, like whatever he looks at. Yeah. Like he pulls a beer out of the fridge and then he explodes. Yeah, and he just keeps thinking of Kenny and just, you know, he's got PTSD. He's just completely, um, you know, he's completely ruined as a person because of that terrible trauma. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, the song is 7 minutes 40, which is apparently an edit down from about 10 minutes or so. Um, yeah. For me, I felt, the, I felt the length of it, although... Listening to, or sorry, reading the comments on YouTube, a lot of people say the opposite, that it just flies by. Yeah. Um, like Kenny. All of his songs are long. I think he gets more royalties. I was thinking about that. Oh, yeah. You bring out one song that goes mm. just eight minutes or whatever. Yeah. That's twice the amount of money as if you brought out a four-minute song. How's that work? For the royalties, because they pay you by the length of the song. Really? On the radio. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I just made that up. Ah, oh, okay. So I think what happens to buy me a pony, you know? Right about it. They just get, um, you know, half the half the money that a normal single would get. You know, you'd regret it. You'd, you'd want to top yourself, I reckon. You know, you write a hit song, but it's like half as half as long as everyone else's. You know, you, yeah. get, you get penalised for brevity, I guess. So that's why Meathead and Jim Steinbeck were both. Um, uh, obviously compelled to write or push the envelope with singles as far as, uh, you know, they were money hungry. So I didn't, I didn't realise that, Dan. Interesting fact there, interesting fact that you just made up about the... Uh, yeah, I thought, I thought that's how it works. Yeah. I think you're pulling one over us. You're pulling us all off. 
All right. I think you're just... Um, It'd be terrible for, to make up bullshit for this uh, podcast. It would be. I mean, you know, you have this tendency to do that. I, I'm very straight down the line. Uh, I like to just tell people the truth. I don't want to, you know, colour it with, with some sort of, I don't know, some sort of, what do you call it, like a parody or something like that. This is, you know, this is truth-telling time here. This is us yeah. sitting by the fire, probably set up by your maid with your slippers on, and um, just telling it like it is, you know? We, we're, yeah. We're just farmers, really. Uh, so today I ate a pulled pork pizza. Oh, nice. How's that going? Pulled pork puff pizza. Right, so pulled pork as opposed to just <coughs> leaving it there on the pig, I guess. Yeah. And um, so I took out the plastic and half the uh, topping just fell out onto the <laughs> fucking... Onto the out, so to stick it all back on and chuck it in the oven. Oh God! Well, there's not much topping normally on these kind of frozen pizzas to start with, so losing oh, this half is good. of it. This is a good one. I recommend it. I recommend it. it uh, yeah. It was. It was like a Domino's pizza. Is that good quality? Oh mate, you're up there with the gods. You know, Domino. And then um, it was raining, and then I fell asleep. It's raining inside the house. No, it, just, it was just rainy outside and I fell asleep. I felt like meatloaf. Oh, no. I felt like a real asshole. Yeah, man. Well, it depends what era we're talking about. But did did, did you look at the pizza through the rearview mirror? I mean, how's it, how's it look now? <laughs> it looked closer in the fridge. Yeah, yeah. Than, than it should have been. Did it appear to be an unusual shape or did you think that you were um, suffering some kind of um, mental breakdown? What was going on? Oh, no, it wasn't a mental breakdown. I've had had one of those before. It's, mm. uh, what kind of pizza it, did you have when you do when the breakdown happened? Was it a uh, pizza just, or a meatloaf? Oh, uh, probably pepperoni. <laughs> yeah, well, that's probably what it is. Maybe the preservatives did did, yeah. uh, did a number on you. Um, so you know, pulled pork sounds nice. Um, what's what's the brand? Is that Smeggles as well, or is that uh, uh, Doctor Shivago? Doctor Shivago's. They're um, a an outfit from the Ukraine, I think. They're just um, yeah. trying to trying to take on Doctor Octopus from from uh, from Auschwitz, who yeah. makes some really fine frozen pizzas. Those sort of thin, crispy ones that um, even people who don't eat junk food will say, "This is my little special delight. I'm going to have a Doctor Octopus Auschwitz pizza." Um, <coughs> but you're having, you know, you're, you're taking it on with the what's it called again? Dr. Oh, Dr. Shivago, yes, Dr. Shivago from the Ukraine, pulled yeah. pork pizza. What else was on it then, Dan? Um, it's just like that's it. It's pulled pork and cheese. Fucking hell! There's no tomato, or is it pastry? Is it pastry? Yeah, it's pastry. It's pulled pork. It's pulled puff paste. Pulled puff. <laughs> it's, it's pulled puff. It rises. <laughs> yeah, it's a pulled pork pastry puff. Pizza from yeah. Dr. Javago, makers of the finest pizzas in the Ukraine. If you can open the package without pulling everything onto the floor. I mean, you know, every time you tell me about a meal, you know, it's an adventure, really. I mean, some of the stories you tell me are horrifying, but it's always exciting to know, you know, what, what new uh, what new meal you, you've got up to this week, you know? I mean, yeah. um, I think there's plenty of sponsorship room there. You, you're really covering the gamut of all kinds of um, fantastic new new frozen foods and new fast foods and things like that. Um, yeah, uh, try to keep it topical. Yeah, no, it's great. I think it's kind of more uh, involving than the actual video clips that uh, they springboard from, you know? Mm. Um, I just was looking at Meatloaf's Wikipedia page. Oh yes, and his real his real name is Marvin. I thought his real name. I, though I heard his real name was Robert Paulson. His name stop it. is Robert Paulson. His name stop it. is Robert Paulson. His name stop it. is Robert Paulson. Yeah, Fight Club reference. No, how dare you say that? But his real name is Marvin. How funny is that? And he changed it to Michael. Um, okay, yes. Oh, his first name is Marvin. So Marvin's best friend, Kenny. I thought he was going to try and change his name to Kenny because of his dead friend. Yeah. But, uh, so his first name was Marvin. And then he yes. changed, changed it to what? To Michael. Yeah. 
Michael. And then, uh, but it doesn't say why it's called Meatloaf. It says he's been in 50 movies and television shows. Yeah, yeah. He was in. Um, he was the lead in um, uh, An Officer and a Gentleman. And what else? Uh, obviously, he had a bit part in Fight Club. And he was in uh, Aliens. What else is in? Um, Home Alone 2, I think. Oh, wow, okay. And His father really was an alcoholic. Yeah, I told you. You think I just make stuff up, but, you know, his name was Robert Polston. Shit. Um, what else was he in? Um, the Right Stuff, he was in that. Um, I mean, he's been in so many films. Once Upon a Time in the West, starring Robert yeah, Polston. <laughs> Did one of the video I sent you? He's on a reality show. Oh yeah, yeah. And he thinks that Gary Bussey's stolen his paint set, and he loses mm. his shit. Mm. So he's going to beat the shit out of Gary Bussey. That'd be an interesting one. I can, I reckon Bussey would have one up on him. Bussey don't give a shit. You know what I mean? You can just see it when you look into his crazy, sexy, wild eyes. But he would, you know, you don't know if he's going to fuck you or kill you. He probably do both. Yeah. You know, and then it t- turns out that the paints are just hidden under a plastic bag and Meatloaf's just still being mental and yelling at him, at Gary Boosie. I don't see another bag over here. Okay! I bought those mother sponges! Part of that paint is mine! I'm sick and tired of you mother No, no, hey. no, 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 no. That was all no, mine no. in my basket. No. Oh, mother Hold on, I have the hold on, guys. Hold on, hold on. You don't want to make you get it. You don't want to start with me. Me, don't do it. Oh. Don't do it. Mother, you do not want to with me. You look in my eyes. I am the last person in the world you ever want to with. You understand me? You understand me? You understand? He's probably embarrassed, you know. I mean, at this old age, I mean, he's probably got dementia. He can't sing very well anymore. And his name was Robert Paulson. And now, and now, it's, what, what's his name now? His name is Meatloaf. And it's like, what do you do, Meat, Meatloaf? You've got these absolutely full tilt, elaborate songs that require amazing vocal skills that you no longer possess. So yeah, right. now you're going to have to just go on these weird celebrity get me out of here shows and have fights with people like Gary Boosie and Gary Coleman if he was still alive he, he'd definitely be up for it I reckon they would have been best friends Meathead and Gary Boosie I mean Gary Coleman sorry from what was it what was it different different um, strokes yeah right the sad, sad thing well, he apparently he was friends with John Belushi as well Gary Coleman um, Meatloaf oh right yeah we'll see I mean it's amazing they didn't do an eight ball together and an overdose. I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was just reading the Wikipedia page, mm. and um, they're talking about the AFL controversy when he's saying of the AFL. Mm-hmm. Um, Meatloaf responded by calling online critics butt smellers and the yeah. AFL jerks, mm-hmm. and saying I will go out of my way to tell Aaron that any artists do not play for them. Yeah, right. Um, oh, yeah. And then he apologised later on in 2015. Yeah. But what? just four years later, he apologised. He called the AFL jerks. Yeah. Um, yeah. They I gave mean, him half a million dollars. I know. They gave him enough enough money. I mean, it's like the entire annual uh, government budget of Tasmania to, to this fucking has-been guy who sweated and shot hot, uh, T-shirts out of a hot dog, did a 20-minute sort of mashup of his songs, and he actually came across like a drunken um, imposter trying to pretend to be Meatloaf. And he got paid yeah. like a million dollars for that. And, uh, yeah, you know, he got a little bit of stick from people, and he called us did, assholes. I mean, how dare he do that, this fucking giant American cocksucker? Did you like the song, though? Did you think it was a good choice? Did it um, um, move you to tears? Yeah, I mean it's a it's an interesting 
um, attempt at, at, at real emotion. I, I, I'm a big sucker for that kind of thing, as sort of looking back and, you know, the kind of melancholy and that sort of thing. And I'd, I'd read a bit about the song before I watched it, and to be honest, it just it disappointed me. Um, I found it quite monotonous, and it didn't have the kind of uh, rising kind of... Um, uh, big, big sort of bombastic ending that, I mean, it, it's sort of a little bit catchy. It has to be because it's just playing the same piano bit over and over again for what yeah. sounds like a, an eternity. Um, it strangely reminded me of November Rain, and I think November Rain is, is a good one to compare it to because there's a song that has that bombastic kind of thing, has a piano, and actually builds up into something quite, you know, full yeah. tilt with the slash solo, and the video clip's pretty memorable as well, you know, the kind of ridiculous wedding and Slash is standing there by a barn in the middle of the desert or something doing his heli- uh, solo that's filmed by a helicopter and all that. Um, you know, that, that's a real song in terms of it's 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 a long song, but it, it has a sort of... Um, it, it has a sort of momentum that builds to this sort of big finale, whereas this one just sort of doesn't have that for me. It's sort of... Um, it feels like a big lump of meat just sitting there on a train track waiting to get run over yeah well um shit I don't know if there's much more to say about it I think we should um no I think we've done it wrap it up yeah no it's been really good um this has been the best podcast we've done yet um his name was Robert Polston and this is a, a tribute to Meathead um real name uh Marvin Marvin thank you so much for the beautiful music you've made yes we don't yeah. think this one was was one of your best um, the album itself, uh, Bat Out of Hell 2, Back in the back in Action or whatever it was called, um, went on to sell 14 million copies. Um, yeah, and I've been Ray Parker Jr. Oh, yes, it's Ray Parker Jr. over there. This song, it only charted 52 in Australia, best chart position is 26. So basically, it wasn't such a good song for old Meaty. Um, and I think it's, it's justifiably uh, mediocre at best, you know. And the crowd knew it. They smelt shit and said, "No, nah, this isn't. This isn't um, uh, fucking someone by the dashboard light or whatever it is. Um, this isn't. I'd do anything for love, except I wouldn't do that. Um, or obviously, bad out of hell. I mean, whatever the fuck that is. I mean, you know, there's a lot of classic meat songs there that just think of of richness and uh, residual fat. But this this one." No, there's no, there's no fat on the bone. It's, it's, it's an emaciated corpse. Of yeah, no, of I, I give it a, I think it's a C. Yeah, C minus, um, for me. Uh, yeah. Well then, uh, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, what's your name again? Uh, Ray Parker Jr. Oh, thanks, Ray. Ray, thanks for, thanks for, um, offering your opinion tonight and telling us about your, um, <laughs> your pizza and sharing that vulgar story about um, meatloaf and what he did with chickens. I think that went down well. Yeah. Um, you know, this is this has been a hoot, a real hoot. Um, oh, well, I'm, lo- I'm looking forward to episode seven. Oh, mate, they all are this already. Is, yeah, We're, the ratings are through the roof. You know, we n- nothing we can we we can't we can just talk shit and people just love it. You know, they keep saying, "When are you going to do a new one?" I get to wait a week. They can't even wait that long. You know. Yeah. But, like, well, calm down, calm down. We've got to do this properly, you know. If we rush it, you know, I don't want to spoil a good thing. So if I can just get your hand off it. Yeah, cool, bro. I'd do, any, I'd do anything for love, you know, but I might not do that. I don't know. Like a bat out of hell, I'll be gone when the pizza comes. Yep, yep, yep. Shit out of luck. All right, well, thanks so much um, for explaining that video for us there, uh, Ray. And um, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful fucking week. Oh, thanks, mate. His name was Robert Paulson, and this has been Video Explained. Thank you so much. All right. Good night. Good night, mate. Bye. Video, video, explain, explain.